Uh huh. Now we're getting ready to get the full course. Woo! Amen. And Amen. So next, after the praise ministry, we will be hearing the word of God from the man of God, Pastor James Hardy of Greater Light Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Ain't it good? Ain't it good? I praise the Lord. It's a pleasure for me to introduce my husband. I'm going to try to make it short. I'm going to surprise him. Because <laughs> he's my all in all. He is a, a man of God, truly a man of God. He, um, just like you see him, that's the way he is all the time. He loves the Lord, and he'll do anything he can for anyone. He don't care who you are. If he needs his help, he's going to be there to help you. So I thank God for a man like that. So you know if he'll treat anybody like that, you know how he'll treat me. So I'm not, um, I, 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 feel, I feel honored to be his wife. For 35 years, 35 years, I've been his wife, I feel honored. It has been a pleasure for 35 years. Now, I ain't gonna say you're gonna get on my nerves sometimes. Cause it does. And I'm sure I get on here sometimes. But it's all in love. And I thank God for him. I thank God for the man of God. He, he does what he said say he's gonna do. He go where he say he gonna go. Amen. He treats everybody the same. I thank God for him. Amen. He is a really a strong tower for me. Uh, amen. A strong tower. Yeah. When I'm weak and when I'm down, yeah. he's right there. Amen. You're gonna be all right, baby. Uh -huh. It's all right, baby. Lay down. Because I've had some sick days. Still having them. But God, he has been there for me. So I thank God for the kind of man he is. I thank God for a man like, like, like him. And you know, we got another man like that in Deacon Russell. A man of God, he know how to treat his wife, take care of his wife. So I haven't got to that point where he has to do what Deacon Russell has to do. And I hope I don't get there. But if I do, I know who I got to take care of me. So I thank God for me. And all the children can say, Amen. my children, I got some children back there, that I'm telling the truth. They know what kind of man he is. And the granddaddy and the grandchildren too. Aren't the grandchildren? Stand up, grandchildren. We got some grandchildren back there. What else? All right, the granddaddy. They know it. They know granddaddy will be there whatever they need. So I thank God for that kind of man. A man of God, a true man of God, a real true man of God, and I thank God for it. I, I, I can't say it enough how how for how blessed I feel to be his wife. I thank God. I give you my husband, Pastor James Hart. Praise God. My little boys, can't you tell? God is good. I give honor to God who, in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And to Pastor Grant, to the minister, to the deacons, deaconess, in other words, to the household of faith. We are in this thing together. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. And he wants us to rejoice and be glad. Amen. I said I'm going to sing a song, but I don't know whether my voice is going to help me or not. Hallelujah. 
something that stirred me up on the inside. I just, yeah, when they said, he's going to turn it around. Yeah. 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 Even with this epidemic, God's going to turn it around. Yeah. And he's always there. And the song that God put on my heart, one of the songs I recorded, I won't give up. Amen. No matter what comes my way, I won't give up. No matter what, I will not give up.
See 
another day and to be confronted with brand new mercies. That's enough to thank God for. And we need to give him some homage and adoration. Give him some praise. The word of God said that everything that has breath praise you. Yes. 
some glory. To give him some honor. Some may look at me strange, but you don't know my story. And I don't know your story. But I know who knows all of the stories. Amen. Amen. God, he knows everything. Yeah. I want you to turn your Bibles to St. John, the 11th chapter. The 11th chapter. And then... But me, 
you have not always. You may be seated. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, we thank you for your love, for your mercy and your grace. You said in your word, your word will not return to you void or empty. It will accomplish. We don't know when and how and where. Whether today or tomorrow or next week or next year or at somebody's bedside at death. But you said your word will not return unto you void. We want to thank you. Bless the church. Let us all have listening ears. And every message that you give me to preach or to teach is to me first. And then I share the good news. With, with others, your word, so that you can get the glory out of the rest of our lives. Because in the beginning, because we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity, but we, when we accepted you, we want you to get the glory out of the rest of our lives. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength, my Savior, and my Redeemer. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. amen. Then said Jesus, let her alone against the day of my burial has she kept this for the poor always you have with you. But me, you have not always. In other words, Jesus was talking about his fleshly body. You won't have me walking and talking with you always. But I'm gonna, gonna leave you and I'm gonna send a comforter. In order for the comforter to come, I have to leave you. And when I leave, the comforter will come. And he will lead and guide you into all truth. And bring all things to your remembrance. And he's to comfort you when you're stressed out. He's a comforter. And he said, I will never leave you. Is yours for the asking. I want to use for a subject for a few moments the love of God. The love of God. Hallelujah. Mary anointed Jesus at Bethany. And Bethany is about two miles from Jerusalem on the east slope of the Mount of Olives. It was Jesus' abiding place when he visited Jerusalem. Amen. Hallelujah. It was his abiding place. Now, because God loves us, because he loves us. Now, what is this is all about? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What is it all about? What it's all about. Hallelujah. We need to think. God wants us to evaluate some things. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It is about what we lost. Yeah. This is what it's all about. It's about what we lost through Adam and Eve. What we lost, how did we lose it? Because of their disobedience unto the word of God. Because of their disobedience. Are we disobedient? Are we planned to be disobedient? 
Are we premeditating to be disobedient? What is our desire? The word of God says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And I always like to make it plain. Not this heart. As a man thinketh in his heart. You have two hearts. Two hearts. The organ that pumps blood in your chest to keep your physical body alive. And when it stops, there's death. But this one, the word of God said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. This heart can be transplanted into another human being. You mean to tell me another human being going to have your heart? Not this heart. Not this heart. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Only God can separate the soul and spirit. This heart. He said, I will take out this stony heart and put in a heart of flesh. Hallelujah. 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 God is a good God. Jesus said, in Matthews yeah. chapter 9 and part of verse 13, Bye. Jesus said, I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners unto repentance. Sinners unto repentance. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans 6, 23. Tells us, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Amen? Amen. Is eternal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is a good God. What I want you to turn to Ezekiel. The 28th chapter, we need to know something about our adversary. Oh! You need to know something about your adversary. Look at Ezekiel 28. I want you to see something about this adversary. Hallelujah. God is a good God. Yes, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to look at the 11th verse. Start at the 11th verse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. The limitation for the angelic king of Tyre, Satan. Hallelujah. He said, moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a limitation upon the king of Tyre. Take up grieving, sorrowless, and say unto him, Thus said the Lord God. You sealeth up the soul, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. You has been in Eden, the garden of God. Eve, every precious stone was your covering. The sardis, the topaz, and the diamond, the bear. The olive and the jasper, the sapphire and the emerald and the copper and the gold. The workmanship of your tablets and of your pipes 
was prepared in you in the day that you was created. You are the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set you so. You was upon the holy mountain of God. You has walked up and down in the midst of stones of fire. You was perfect in your ways from the day that you was created till iniquity found in you. He means you. By the multitude of your merchandise and you have sinned. Therefore, I will cast you as profane out of the mountain of God and I will destroy you, O covering circle. From the midst of the stone of fire. Mm -hmm. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You have corrupted your wisdom by reason of your brightness. I will cast you to the ground. I will lay you before kings that they may behold you. You have defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your traffic. Therefore, for this reason, will I bring forth fire from the midst of you. It shall defile you, and I will bring you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold you, that look and see you, mm -hmm. all they that know you among the people shall be astonished at you. You shall be a terror and never shall you be anymore. This about the adversary, uh -huh. the devil, right. Lucifer, yeah. Satan. Amen? Yeah. And turn to Revelation 12. Right. Okay. Won't you see something else about your adversary? Our adversary. Oh, Hallelujah. Amen. Revelation 12. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. Revelation 12. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Look at verse 7. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And verse 7 reads on this one. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevail not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels was cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren yes. is cast down, Amen. which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him, and they overcame him, and they overcame him, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. 
And they love not their lives unto the death. Therefore, for this reason, rejoice, you heavens, and you that dwell in them. Woe, sorrowful, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, great anger, won't, won't revenge trying to get back at God because he knows that he has but a short time. He knows that he has but a short time. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He knows that his time is short. Yes. Amen. Amen. So we as the people of God we have to recognize who Jesus is. Look at what the people did. How they put probably when they heard about how Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead and that stirred up something in Satan. It stirred up his mind because he wanted to do something about it but he could not do anything about it. He wanted to, but the evil, the, the priests got together. They got together trying to plot things. They do it to today because Satan is the prince and the power of the air. The Satan does not take sick leave on vacation. He works overtime all the time. He wants to stir up your mind. He wants to cause trouble in your life. But the love If you have the 